and welcome to Messy Church. How are you, Layla? I'm doing really good. Have you been enjoying the sunshine and maybe even watching the football? Yes, both. Very much enjoying the sunshine and I've even been watching the football. Are you excited for the summer holidays coming up? Yes, I'm very excited for the sunshine. Shall we do our countdown so we can find out what our theme is for this month? Yes, let's. Ready? Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Messy church! Did you know it's our last messy church before the summer break today? All right, I see. Well, we've been looking at different people who met Jesus, so I wonder who the last person is going to be today. Hmm. Well, I've got a clue. And it's a mirror. How interesting. I have one too. What can you see in your mirror? Hmm. Well, myself and some things behind me, but mainly just myself. Me too. Maybe it's got something to do with us. Hmm. Yeah, maybe. Maybe it's something to do with us meeting Jesus ourselves. Let's say goodbye now to our Missy Church friends and find out. We hope you have a very wonderful summers and hope hopefully see you again in September. Bye. Bye-bye. Well, hello, and this time is now the craft time, and our lovely Andrea, who's been brilliant at doing all of them, is on holiday. So she's enjoying herself, and so I'm here with another special person called Hazel, who's going to help us with our craft. So, hello, Hazel. Hello. What have you got with you today? What are we doing? We've got two exciting projects. Oh. Do you know what? I haven't done anything like this for ages. Exciting. So I'm very excited. So the first thing is going to be a frame. Ooh. And something really special is going to go inside the frame. Like what? It's going to be a photo of you. <gasps> exciting. So uh, the frame looks a bit boring at the moment. So let's see how we can make it a little bit more special so it's unique so that nobody else has got one like this. Right, what shall I do? I'm not very good at drawing, but let's see what <gasps> I can do. Look at the colours. It's amazing, isn't it? It looks really boring to start with just the black, but look, these are sort of magic pencils. Oh, I like these. Hmm. Right, what shall I do next? Let's get, have some more lines along there. I'm going to try and make the corners all the same. That's fun. And nobody else is going to have one like this. This is going to be my special frame. Just like how we're all special and unique. We are. And wouldn't it be boring if we were all the same? This is true. Mm. So God made us the way we are. Right, let's do a little bit more detail. I think we'll have some more lines. God has given us all these gorgeous colours. So much colour. I love colour. I mm. love lots and lots of colour. What am I going to do? I think some more lines. <laughs> <laughs> I've run out of ideas. got here now Hazel we're going to make a very special cross to remind us that Jesus died for us and I'll show you how we're going to do that we've got a picture of a cross excellent and we've got a hole punch Ooh. 
and I'm going to try and get this and so make it so I've got a hole in the middle. Oh, and you've got some string here. That's so that you can hang it up. That's it. So it's going to be a hanging decoration as well. Wonderful. It's not just going to be a plain cross. It's going to be a mirror cross. <gasps> I don't think I've ever seen one of these no. before. How are you going to make a mirror cross? Well, I've got... How many tiles have I got? Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, six seven, seven, eight, eight nine. nine. Now, what shall I do with those? I want to lay them out in a pattern or just random, however you want. Right, so let's just plan this. So I'll make sure that I don't stick a tile over the hole. That would be a bit silly, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> let's have a look. I, I think... think perfect number that will do look at that yes now here's the tricky bit you've got to peel <gasps> off the back and not just only the back you've got to peel off the front as well oh, so the back has the sticky yes yeah. so I'm going to stick that down so i'm going to start at the top right and then work my set well work my way down Right, but you can stick your tiles any way you want. You don't have to do it this way. This is what I'm doing. But you think of your own design or your own pattern because you're special. Oh, like with this one where we all had our own designs. Yes, yes. Right. Now, that looks okay. Mm -hmm. It can look even <gasps> better. Even better? How? Because there is another sticky layer on <gasps> the top of each tile. <gasps> what a difference! Whoa! If I peel I can see those my off. Eye. Oh, no, your Ooh. eye. Oh! See Hazel's <laughs> eye. <laughs> I think I want to see a little bit more of me. Because I tell you why. Because I'm special. Like you're special and Jesus died for everyone and he's died for us. And this reminds us, if we look in these mirrored tiles, we're going to see who Jesus died for. And that's so exciting. So we can be friends with God again. Yes. And it didn't die just for me. Or just for Rachel or for whoever you know he died for everyone and this is going to help us remember that not forget so every time you look into this mirrored cross you're going to be reminded that Jesus loves you so much that he died for you so let's have a look, see what <gasps> I can see in here. <gasps> oh, it's me! <laughs> oh, can we see ourselves in the camera? Can you see my fingers holding the phone? Yes, we can. <laughs> so Amazing. Jesus loves us so much that he died for us. And we are special because of what he's done for us. And we can get to know him, can't we? Yes. And that's exciting. Very exciting. <laughs> We're going to use these later to talk to God as well. Right. Talk about exciting. There we are. I've made, you can make that a little bit stronger if you're at home and you've got more time. And you can there cut there it if you are. really want to as well. Yes. So that's a good idea. I'd forgotten about that, Rachel. Thank you. We're helping that, each other. Yes. That will make it even more special. I often forget things and it's so nice when somebody else reminds me. And like Rachel said, we help each other. And even if two people look in this at the same time, they're going to see two different Ooh, beautiful faces. That's true. No. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I do hope you enjoy making this because I really have. <laughs> Thank you, Hazel. Thank you, Rachel. Bye. Bye.
I lay my life down at your feet You're the only one I need I turn to you and you are always there In troubled times it's you I seek I put you first, that's all I need I am all all I am, all to you One way, Jesus You are the only one that I could live for One way, Jesus You are the only one that I could live for You are always, always there Every how and everywhere Your grace abounds so deeply within me You will never, never change Yesterday, today the same Forever till forever means no we're going to be looking at today hmm. I mean it might be Bob or Mike or Sue or Julie and actually I think there might be a Sophia or an Isla a Lewis or a Josh in fact there may be even um an Amy Catherine Simon or Chris I think we better look at the clues shouldn't we and find out who it is what's this it's a mirror and what do you see when you look inside a mirror you see yourself, don't you? Yeah, that's right. And the person this month that we're going to be looking at, can you guess? It's you. Yes, you watching. You and you and you and me too. I know what you're thinking. We're not in the Bible. Jesus lived 2,000 years ago. And no one watching was alive then. No. I hope as we look at some more clues, you will understand why you too can be part of this series we've been looking at with Messy Church and why you are the best person for this series to end on. Well, mirror number one is clue. Clue number two is this. And what's this? Well, it's a box. And it's a very special box because it's got stuff like this inside. 
And oh, I recognise this from earlier. It's your messy church box, isn't it? I hope you've really been enjoying your boxes. You've had them for over a year now. Okay, well, some of you less so, but we've been doing them for a year and I really hope that um, we'll be able to meet again in church person soon at church. That would be awesome, wouldn't it? Okay. And you have heard all sorts of stories. You've made all sorts of crafts. Have you had any favourite crafts or favourite boxes? Hmm? Your Pentecost parties with the pizzas was pretty fun, wasn't it? I mean, I've got to admit, I enjoyed eating that. I also enjoyed making my sponge boat and my little messy church Jolly Rogers sail to put on my sponge boat. Must admit, I did enjoy these. <laughs> did you have any favourites or favourite stories? I mean, a couple of months ago, I was wearing a beard, wasn't I? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we looked at Peter. And since September, we've been looking specifically at Jesus, haven't we? We looked at, remember those statements that began with I am, like I am the light and the gate and all those things about what Jesus said about himself. And then we started looking at how he changed the lives of those he met. Do you remember who they were? They were Lazarus, Mary, Peter, Paul. And then this month we're looking at you, aren't we? And did you know that just before, you know, Jesus died on the cross and he was arrested before that. And just before he was arrested, Jesus prayed for three groups of people. First, he prayed for himself. And secondly, he prayed for his disciples, his friends. And finally, he prayed for those who would come to believe in him through the words of his friends. That includes anyone today who chooses to follow Jesus. So even though Jesus prayed that and that happened 2,000 years ago, if you choose to follow Jesus, Jesus prayed for you. Yes, you are in the Bible. What? I'm in the Bible because Jesus prayed for me because I'm a follower of Jesus. What? <laughs> okay. Let's look at the next clue. My mind is already blown. Oh, it's a bit smelly. I, I've been wiping this one. <laughs> okay. So I've got one good piece of fruit do you have a piece of fruit that's your favorite i personally like strawberries and mangoes they're my favorite and what's this is a really brown <laughs> smelly um banana that's very soft and squidgy and it kind of bends when i hold it <laughs> i was asked to bring a bad piece of fruit so you know I feel like I've done done this justice for you. <laughs> okay. And do you remember when we looked at Jesus saying, I am the vine? And we played a game called Is It a Fruit? Our lives, before we choose to follow Jesus, are like this mouldy old piece of fruit. Not very nice. But after we meet Jesus and allow him to change us, we begin to bear good fruit like this one. We see more love, joy, and peace in our lives. We've become more patient, kind, and good, and we display more faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Remember the fruits of the spirit. Now you may be thinking, you might be thinking, well, you know, I'm not this bad, am I? Some people perhaps have done more wrong in their lives than others, but we can all admit that we've done things that aren't good, you know? And so we need to ask Jesus to change us and help us to produce those good things. Remember what we just said, the fruits of the spirit. Um, and that's why I'm comparing it to these things, okay? So the people, let's go back to the mirror. The people we have looked at over the last few months all had big changes in their lives, okay? They all decided that they were gonna say sorry for what they did and trust Jesus and like, you know, follow him and live how God wanted them to. All right, and two of them even got new names, All right? The truth is though, for most people who meet Jesus and allow him to change their life, nothing on the outside really changes. <laughs> they don't look like this, <laughs> right? And they still look the same, sound the same, and keep their name. 
the difference is all on the inside in how they choose to spend their time and money in how they speak to and about people and what they want to do with their life. Now, for me personally, I chose to follow Jesus at about age 11 or so. And, um, you know, I wasn't perfect. I probably wasn't super bad person. But at the same time, I still see, saw the need of saying sorry, you know, for my sins to Jesus and change and walk in the ways God wanted me to. And I saw a big difference in my life. I'm definitely more smiling. <laughs> more peaceful and my love for people grew and as I said like the way I view life you know and everything I know who I live for I live for God I know why I live who I live for and who I live with I know God's in my heart and he's helping me to change he's helping me to live life for him to love him to love other people and I've seen a big change in my life that doesn't mean life is always easy and that I'm perfect I still need God to change me on a daily basis um but I've seen a big difference when I look in the mirror I see someone who is loved by God and loves God now and has a relationship with him and we would love for you that's why I love telling my story and I love doing these messy churches and things to help you also explore faith and explore what it means to who Jesus is what we've been doing and we would love to help you on that journey um you know come chat to us and we can give you bibles and fun coloring things to help you explore faith and all sorts of things and to just cheerlead you as you're on this great adventure in life so yes it's been great being with you for the story and um i will hopefully see you soon
why don't you hold up the beautiful photo frame that you've just decorated or you can hold up the lovely cross that you've also made and have a think about this when I look in the mirror what do I see somebody special looking at me perhaps that's what you think when you look in the mirror but sometimes we don't always feel special sometimes we feel sad we feel lonely we feel angry we feel we don't fit in but if we look at the cross again and remember that Jesus died for us because he loves us so much and if we say sorry for what we've done we'll know deep down that Jesus loves us so much and that he can put a smile on our face again we want to say thank you to God for that And to thank God for making me, me. Bye. God is all around me, in front and behind. Underneath and over me, he's always by my side. Very shoot reminds me, I am safe under his wing. Just like the bubbles floating round. I know God surrounds me. God is all around me, in front and behind, underneath and over me. He's always by my side. The parachute reminds me I am safe under His wing, just like the bubbles floating around. I know God surrounds me. Well, that's it for this month. Thank you very, very much for joining us. Now, the last thing that we do together is say the messy grace. So let's say this together now. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen. See you next time. We have come to the end of July's Messy Church, which means we've come to the end of a whole year's worth of Messy Church. Boy, what a year it's been. <laughs> As I said earlier, I've had lots of fun, like, exploring the stories and the crafts and doing all sorts of messy church stuff with you this year at home but hopefully in September you know there's a lot of decisions and lots of things that is quite complicated it's not super easy for us to just say everyone back in September but we're going to see what we can do and hopefully uh, you know as soon as we can and it's all safe for everybody um, and we're able to do it we will be back in person, okay? As soon as we're able to, <laughs> which might be September, it might not be, we'll, we'll try our best, okay? Um, thank you for your patience, but we will always have fun no matter what. We've proved that this year, haven't we? <laughs> at home or in person, we will have fun at Messy Church. And we love being with you and um, happy summers. Have a great one, keep safe, have fun, enjoy the sunshine and everything that you're doing and I can't wait to see you again soon so goodbye from me and everyone at Mercy Church bye And just to end us with the adult devotionals, um, the lovely Jessica wrote a letter to um, you all. And I'm just going to read it. 
um, which is in your boxes, but in case you haven't got a box, it says, over this past year at Messy Church, we have been looking at things Jesus said about himself and at some point who encountered him and had their lives changed by him. I wonder how surprised you were too to discover that today's person was you. It has been my prayer throughout this year that as we introduce Jesus to you, you would encounter him and realise he is who he says he is. Did you hear the words of Jesus and think, that's what I want or that's what I need? He is calling you, as he called Mary, Simon, Peter and Saul Paul. He wants you and his family to change you and use you to do wonderful things for him. Yes, the creator of the universe wants you as a friend and partner in his plan to make the world more as he intended. Your transformation may not be as dramatic as those who um, we have looked at. Name and job changes may not be mandatory. They're not. <laughs> the same internal change, however, will happen. And that is the change that really matters. Right now you are alive. Your body is functioning to ensure oxygen is getting around your body. But do you have life? Life is what Jesus offers. I am the way, the truth and the life. I am the bread of life. I am the resurrection and the life. I used the analogy a few months ago of the Thai football team who got trapped in the cave. They were alive, but as good as dead without the intervention of others outside the cave. It is the same for someone who has not let Jesus change their life. One prophet in the Old Testament put it this way. God will remove you, remove from them their heart of stone and give them a heart of flesh. Ezekiel chapter 11 verse 19. A heart of stone is useless. It cannot pump blood and keep life going. A heart of flesh, on the other hand, can. In this case, a heart of flesh symbolises a willingness to listen to God and allow his words to change you, his words that bring life. The question is, are you willing to surrender to Jesus and have your life changed by him? You have heard what he has said about himself and now you need to choose if he... if. He was telling the truth and just, a, sorry, and now you need to choose if he was telling the truth or just a deluded man who shouldn't be taken seriously. I pray you choose the former. It isn't always easy following Jesus. Accepting his words means no longer living for yourself. Remember Paul's words that everything he valued before knowing Jesus came as worthless um, rubbish in the light of knowing Jesus. Like Paul, I believe knowing Jesus is the best thing in life and would really encourage you to try it out for yourself. If you want to explore further, I'd love to meet with you and talk it through with you. So this is Jessica speaking as um, Messy Church leader, but I also would love to and others on the Messy Church team would too. We have books that um, take you through John's account of the life of Jesus that um, Jessica's saying that she would love to read with you and likewise. Um, if you are ready to make that choice, fantastic. We have gifts for you to help you to begin on this amazing adventure. So um, please get in touch if you want to. You can find us on uh, the contact details on our church website. Um, stpeets.org.uk and thank you so much for joining.